here to talk about it and tell us why it isn't going to fall apart. At least I hope not. Bri- uh, Thank Kayla, you, Brian. welcome. Ha- good, good to be here. How are you guys? I'm doing well. So what is the governor saying that's wrong? Uh how, how how long do we have? <laughs> so you know this is a this has obviously become a I mean traditionally this is my first year but from what I've understood you know veto session has typically been a pretty non uh, non not a big issue you know usually you go in and it's just kind of a day on the calendar and people move about their business this has become a big deal uh, basically because of uh, this house bill 253 so we passed the tax cut the tax cut does a number of things number one it, it cuts personal income tax by half percent over 10 years the cut is split up over 10 years um, the cut only co- goes into effect the personal income tax cut only goes into effect if there's a hundred million dollars in general revenue growth um, in in that year uh, than one of the three previous years and so there is a mechanism by which um, you know it's it's a little bit bit more of a, an intentional um, guarded approach to tax cuts. Uh, the Kansas bill, for instance, didn't have any growth triggers in it, so that's one difference between what we're doing and what Kansas has done. Um, it also cut corporate income tax by ha- by in half uh, over a period of five years um, and did a few other things. Um, you know, the governor, number one, the thing that has frustrated me the most about um, what he has done in this process is he is currently withholding four hundred million dollars uh, from K through twelve education from um, from the University of Missouri from from uh, vital services all over the state and it's simply a political ploy. It absolutely it, he is using that money to more or less scare people into thinking that this is something that it's not. Um, and I think that's a, a, a terrible disservice to the people of Missouri. Let's, let's, um, my part, my goal in this and in the conversations that I've had with folks is, look, let's at least talk about the facts. Don't talk about what Governor Nixon has thrown out there because half of it is garbage. Let's talk about what the facts are. Let's talk about what this does, potential ramifications, potential consequences for better or worse, and then let's make a decision based on the facts. But let's not make a decision based on the fact that we have a governor who has been completely disengaged in anything substantive up until this point. Um, now we have a governor who is, is literally holding education institutions hostage by saying, if we override this veto, I'm taking this money away from you. And I don't think that's fair, and I don't think that that adds to a meaningful dialogue on whether or not to cut taxes and how we cut taxes, which is what we're trying to do. Kind of another Democrat with sequestration, isn't it? Well, you know, I mean, it kind of, it kind of is, except for the fact that the, the Con- Missouri Constitution says the governor has the power to withhold revenues when the when the revenues aren't there. Uh, he doesn't have the power to withhold these these money this money when the revenues have come in. There's a four hundred million dollars surplus this year, and I think that's important for people to to understand. There's no reason he has no constitutional ground by which to do what he's doing, and he's doing it anyway. Uh, and I, and like I said, I think that's unfair to Missourians. I think that's unfair to the process of talking about House Bill 253. Um, and I think that's something that you know, regardless of where you stand on the bill. You should be fed up with, and you should be against the way the governor has handled it. Well, a week ago, uh, I had a conversation with the uh, the Republican leader in the Senate, and he said, if it gets to the Senate, it'll be overridden. The problem, he said, is in the House. That's correct. How close are we looking? Um, you know, I've heard anywhere from from two or three to ten folks that that uh, that don't want to vote for it for any number of reasons, and again. You know, this is a very, very difficult issue because you have so many folks in uh, rural areas, you know, rural parts of Missouri, where their public schools are are that's that is their district, their legislative districts. That's that's all they've got. You know, maybe a maybe a hospital somewhere, but for the most part, public education is terribly important. And the same is true for me. I represent part of Columbia, but I also represent Hallsville and Centralia and, and Sturgeon. Um, public public education is a big deal up there, and I and rightfully so. You know, I'm a product of, of Columbia Public Schools. Uh, some people think that's a, a good argument. Some people think otherwise. But uh, but I, you know, I'm proud of that, and I think that we we need to be mindful of the investments that we need to make to continue moving Missouri forward in education. And the governor has said, well, you can't be for education and be for House Bill 253, which is the absolute most ridiculous gross generalization of 
anything I've ever heard in my life. I mean, it is, it is just absurd to say, well, you're either for public education or you're for a tax cut. It's asinine. It's absolutely bogus. And to use that sort of dialogue in this discussion is, again, it's completely unfair. It scared people into thinking that the, this is something that it's not. Um, and it's really diluted the conversation as a whole. And so my, like I said, um, I, I've the people that I'm talking to, I've called, I've made hundreds of personal phone calls to constituents in my district uh, and said and, that have had issues, uh, that have had questions about it. And I said, look, let me just give you the facts. And then if you still don't like House Bill 253, I'm okay with that. But let's 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 get on the same playing field and let's not talk about let's not do all this fear mongering and say the world's going to end because it's not it's absolutely not going to uh, and 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 then if you don't like it still then that that's your prerogative and and we'll move on and I hopefully we'll find something we agree on down the road. What kind of uh, the ratio of for and against are your calls? Uh, mostly for, mostly against. My uh, as of I th- I want to say Tuesday of last week. I, I uh, we we did did the math and I we were very careful to, to keep track of it. About sixty percent of the calls that have come into my office. Um, have been in favor of overriding the governor's veto. Sixty percent of the folks are in favor of getting this tax cut legislation through. Um, you get a, a, I get a lot, obviously, because of how my district is in being representing Columbia and then also representing the northeast part of Boone County. Uh, I get a lot of folks from Columbia that aren't in my district, but that email me and that call me and have input. Um, you know, obviously, folks tied to uh, the university uh, to uh, K through 12 here in Columbia are are they're they're scared to death of it um, and and I just don't think they need to be uh, and so I'm I'm very uh, very much okay with engaging in the dialogue and again saying here's here's the set of facts and and uh, you know the governor has a couple of these assertions that he's made um, it's going to cut it'll 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 shoot a 1.2 billion dollar hole in the budget in one year is com- it's completely absurd. It's just absolutely not possible. Part of the, part of the of an additional cut in the legislation was tied to the passage of the Marketplace Fairness Act, the Internet Sales Tax at at the federal level. It's not passing anytime soon. I mean, I've talked to U.S. I've talked to to the congressional delegation in Missouri in the House to talk to Roy Blunt, who co-sponsored it in the Senate. It's not passing. So it's that's not a fair part of this dialogue to have and to scare people into thinking okay well this thing that very you know that they say it may very well pass well it's not going to pass it won't pass in the next two years it won't pass before 2014 because house republicans won't want to vote for what they see as a a pretty significant tax increase so i mean politically it's not going to happen policy wise it's not going to happen either I'm curious, uh, because you bring up the Internet sales tax, which I'm opposed to. I don't think the federal government needs to pass anything uh, along those lines. But I do believe that the states individually can say, if you sell something on the Internet, and it originates here in the state of Missouri or California or wherever, you have to charge your uh, customer the going sales tax rate. Sure. Why didn't the state of Missouri do that? Well, we've tried. We've We've started the process of doing it a couple of times. There were a couple of bills this year where we would enter in... Well, I take that back. Part of it is basic, most of it is tied to the passage of it at the federal level, and so basically we enter into a pact with other states that if the fed, federal legislation passes, then we're a part of it, you know, so that we can take advantage of some of those revenues. But I don't disagree that um, it, it is better implemented and probably better administered at the state level. Um, well, you know, it, it's, it, it gives us a good opportunity here. As I pointed out, Caleb, when I introduced you, states are in competition. We're in competition with all the other states, and if your sales tax is tied to the purchase at the state level, that gives incentive for politicians, such as yourself, to keep the spending in check, ergo the taxes in check. Because you want this to be a great place to relocate sure. and and sure. Uh, sell from. Sure, and that's and that's absolutely you know uh, the motivation behind House Bill two fifty three um, is we are in competition and we saw it this week. You know, Governor Perry made a very uh, very highly touted visit to our state. Uh, Go- Governor Scott from Florida uh, has done some some quote unquote poaching, um, you know, and I don't I don't know that I necessarily care for what they did, but they have every right to do what they're doing. There's no question about that. Um, and we are in competition, and competition does allow us to make decisions that make us more attractive 
to business. And I think that, you know, we, we say a lot of us more times than not, we say folks either think about, well, let's be more attractive to business or let's invest in education. Well, those two things are very much tied together. Uh, and a lot of what we do in the economic development world hinges on how good of an education system that we have and how good of an education system we have is based in some part by how much money is coming into the system, which is based on how well we are doing it from an economic development perspective. So for anybody to say, the governor included, he's he's very much split these things apart and said, you're either for one or the other, you're not for both. Well, it's bogus because they're, they're absolutely tied together and they'll always be tied together. And if, if our private marketplace and our economy in the state of Missouri is growing and is growing well and is growing above uh, above the federal le- level, uh, that's good for Missouri and in turn that's good for Missouri education. Um, and I think that's very important to remember in this dialogue. Uh, I agree. I, I, I want to point out that uh, one of the questions I ask listeners, uh, and I pointed this out at the fair tax uh, dinner that uh, we had a week ago Friday, if the governor of the state of Missouri were to run an ad in the state of Texas s- trying to seduce their businesses to move here, what would his ad say? Uh, a couple of people say, well, our real estate taxes are lower. But you know what? I can increase the value of my business without increasing the real estate value of the property it's on. So, sure. but at the moment my business is more successful in the state of Missouri, I get hit with a bigger tax. Sure. Uh, they well, the schools are you know better. Uh, kids graduate. Well, yeah, but then we don't have the Mexican immigrants coming across the Missouri border the way they do in Texas. Well, and most m- most of the the dialogue that was had in that whole Missouri versus Texas thing, we can't compare ourselves to Texas in hardly anything because the state demographics and and the geography at all is very very different. I mean, they have oil, we don't. Um, you know, they're educated. There's there's well, yeah, but a, Tennessee I mean, doesn't have oil. And no, that's exactly and right. And Tennessee's a great. Uh, I'm much better comparison for us, and I've said that all along, because the geography of their large metropolitan areas, um, there's a lot of things that line up between Missouri and Tennessee, and, you know, you, we can make the Kansas discussion, and it's relevant because there are there are businesses. We saw three, I saw three new ones this week um, that in the past two or three months have left Missouri going to Kansas, so that's a relevant discussion to be had, there's no doubt about it, um, but Tennessee's a great, great example. Uh, you know, we, we can compare ourselves to Oklahoma in some cases, which they're doing some very uh, innovative things as far as their tax structure goes. And so, I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. We can like it or we can not like it, but we can't turn our back on it and say it's not happening because it absolutely is happening. The truth is, if the state of Missouri were to go to a fair tax and get rid of some of the burdensome regulations that inhibit business growth, we could compare ourselves favorably to any state in the union, and we would be a draw. We've got better climate than they have in Texas. We've got, uh, uh, I think, some of the most beautiful real estate, and I don't care if you're in the mountains, you're looking at the lakes. Uh, we've got, we are the gateway to the Midwest, or to the West. We have all kinds of advantages. If we can just get rid of this burdensome income tax, uh, and at the very least reduce those taxes and some of those government regulations that inhibit business growth. Caleb Rowden is our guest. 874-9390-800-529-5572. If you've got a question for Caleb Rowden, it is The Gary Nolan Show, the Zimmer Radio Network. This is The Gary Nolan Show. Minimum government, maximum liberty. I'm Gary Nolan on News Radio 950 KWOF. This is the Wall Street Journal Report. I'm Jennifer Kishinka. As investors return from summer holidays, they're facing several big questions involving Fed policy, Syria, and discord in Washington. The Journal's Gregory Zuckerman says as the Fed pulls back its bond buying program, you might not want to be in riskier assets. High yield bonds are one area to be concerned about, and maybe stocks that have run up a lot. Uh, You want the Fed helping you and at your back. So, in general, you want to be a little more wary of more expensive stocks. Zuckerman says you'll also want to be wary about to markets that have been fast growers lately, such as India, China, and Turkey. On Wall Street, stocks posting moderate gains. The Dow Industrials up 61 at 14,871. The Nasdaq's up 38. The S&P 500 up 12. It hasn't been tried since the 60s. A live game show on TV, but NBC will take the risk starting next week with the Million Second Quiz inside an enormous hourglass-shaped cage. Contestants will answer trivia questions for hours. This is the Wall Street Journal report. 
That's the sound my coffee mug made when it hit the kitchen floor after I realized my 16-year-old son was addicted to meth. Hurry, hurry this is the sound of him being rushed to the hospital after we found him strung out on his bedroom floor. <laughs> and this is how it sounds when he tells you he's finally ready for treatment. If you or someone you know is recovering from addiction, share your story with the partnership at drugfree.org because your story can change someone else's. Does your business thrive by serving other businesses? Would you like a healthy, steady flow of B2B leads that are customized to grow sales? Hoover's has developed a best-in-class lead generation tool that makes it easy for you to find targeted leads for your business. You'll be amazed at how easy it is to get the right leads fast. Try it today for free. Get 50 free leads in a 24-hour free trial. Just call 800-601-7780. 800-601-7780. 800-601-7780. No matter what happens in life, I will always be there for my brothers. Through thick and thin, we're blood. Except if I crush them in fantasy football, then they can cry over my untouchable roster that says, talk to me next season. Blood's thicker than water, but isn't thicker than football. Crazy about football? Head to Sears for big TVs and big brands from Samsung to Sharp. Get a 55-inch Samsung 1080p LED TV, only $799.99. This is the ultimate football experience. This is Sears. See stores or sears.com slash football for details. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Not many foods are fun to watch cook. Then again, not many foods are lean beef. Every smoke and pop is a feast for the eyes. And every sizzle, that takes your taste buds for a little bit of a ride. So grab summer by the grill and look forward to your next great barbecue. Above all else, beef, it's what's for dinner. Brought to you by Missouri's Cattle Farmers. To learn more about lean beef, visit moobeef.org. Here at Dimmer Radio and Marketing Group, we are always looking for someone who is going to take us to the next level. Just because you don't have a sales background doesn't mean that you can't be great at this. When interviewing people, I really look for someone who sets not only professional goals, but personal goals as well. We want to talk to people that are just as excited to help our clients grow their businesses as we are. We always say here we want to hire for attitude and train for skill. And I think a lot of people don't realize that whenever you apply for us, we're not necessarily looking for someone who has a sales background. We are open to anyone. We also look for people that are self-motivated. We want to know what motivates you because we know that we can get the best out of you when you're self-motivated and we know what drives you. We want someone who is goal-oriented and does have a track record of success. We don't want quitters. We want someone who is going to be in here and is truly looking for a great career. If you think you have what it takes to join our award-winning team, visit ZimmerCommunications.com and click on the employment button for more information. KWOF. Coming up in the uh, next hour of the program, compressed natural gas. The city of Columbia is going to spend a fortune bringing a compressed natural gas dealer uh, with your taxpayer money to the Columbia area. We're going to talk about that. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. In the meantime, Caleb Rowden is with us, a uh, m- member of the uh, Missouri House of Representatives, and we're talking about the uh, veto override uh, of Governor Nixon. You've been getting some tweets from some liberals uh, while you're on the program. But they don't seem to have the testicular fortitude to call. They just <laughs> send you some missive on your uh, Twitter Well, account. Yeah, I mean, you know, and the, the, the liberal argument on this uh, is, you know, they don't believe that tax cuts stimulate the economy in the first place. And so this has this is very much, at its core, is very much either either you believe in less government and more money in the private marketplace or you or you believe otherwise, um, and and we've the, the there has been a lot of rhetoric thrown into this conversation. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I believe in lower taxes. I absolutely do. I think that is something that absolutely stimulates uh, our private economies in our private marketplace that's not to say that we don't need to be doing other things as well i.e invest in education and do those things that no, we need to I do don't know. I, we invest a ton in education well, and I, let me ask you this very quickly uh in the next session are you going to introduce a fair tax bill you know i, I haven't even thought about it frankly think, um think about <laughs> it think about it and i will let you i will Promote the hell out of you for that. <laughs> okay. All right, let me go to the phones here. Because before I go to the phones, read that tweet that you got from the from the guy from the NEA. 
Uh, and then, because he's getting on his Twitter account, uh, 874 9390 800 Basically, further, further tax cuts won't improve Missouri's competitiveness. It, they will undermine it. So, again, it goes back to the discussion of um, we, we have come, we have put ourselves in this box of either we're trying to make the private economy grow and we don't care about education or vice versa and that's just those those are not good boxes to put ourselves in because they're not relevant and they're not reality let's go to the phones very quickly alan welcome glad to have you on the gary nolan show hey gary uh first of all mr rodden i agree wholeheartedly with your tax cut and your and and overriding the governor's veto i have contacted both my senator and representative in support of you now I'm going to throw you the curveball. <laughs> what do you feel about the override of House Bill 436? Uh, House Bill 436, 436 is the the gun bill, the Second Second Amendment Preservation Act. Um, it, I, it will. I am 99 percent sure it will be overridden. Um, and uh, you know the 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 hit on it that people make is the constitutionality of it. Um, and you know that's something that that definitely is probably going to be a part of the discussion. Uh, I think it's important for people to understand when we talk about um, you know the supremacy clause at the federal level. Um, I, I I very much believe in that, but I also believe and have have and, and know for a fact that the supremacy clause applies to uh, let, uh, laws that are enacted at the federal level that that support the Constitution. And if there are laws enacted at the federal level that do not support what the Constitution says, then the states do have a right to push back. Um, and so I think that's part of the discussion that's being had um, with with House Bill 436. Alan, i got to run. I appreciate the call. Glad okay. to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. Thank you. I think he was going to say keep up the good work to you. Uh, let me uh, very quickly, Pete, you got to got to go fast. Welcome. Okay. Uh, a good thing for we can advertise in Missouri is that our state officials are free. They're free to spend five and a half million dollars on a King airplane without anybody okaying it. Well, I hadn't thought about that. I wonder how that'll run in Texas. Yeah, All right, well, Pete. Free in Missouri. Pete, Pete, thank you. Glad to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. Daniel, welcome. Glad to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. Got to go fast. Yeah, uh, long story short, I operate both my grandpa's farms and my wife's going through school at PT at the University of Missouri. And over the weekend, my cousin come in from Kansas and was telling my wife about all the opportunities she had out in Kansas. And before we left my grandma's house, my wife was asking me, so what do you think about Kansas? <laughs> oh, geez, that's horrible. Daniel, thank you for the call. Fairtax, introduce the bill. Caleb, it is the best thing the state can have. On that cheerful note, I'll let you, I'll <laughs> let you out of the you guys. All right, John Boehner going to support Obama in Syria. Gary Nolan, Zimmer, Radio Network.